with uh, obviously with not the name thing, I learned force momentum wrong for like two years. I was doing it wrong for two years, but I was still kind of doing it right. I was just oh, doing sorry. it super. And it goes, we're going to crown the next partner right now. And that's when I realized that the email I, I had gotten, which I haven't brought up here yet, uh, was lying. And I, because uh, we were sat in a special cool gamer like area of the arena, uh, they start panning the like light and the camera and it's turning. And I'm like, ah, uh, it points to me. Uh, card games usually have like small things to, that are really hard to counterfeit. Hi right, lads, welcome back to Inside MC, the part of the podcast where I sit down with an amazing guest every single week. And this week I'm joined with someone who is decently good at parkour. Uh, they've also had a cool experience happen to them over the last weekend, which from when this podcast is coming out, it would have been like two weeks ago. It doesn't matter, we're going to talk about it. Today I'm joined with Kaylin. Yeah, wait, I figured that. <laughs> no, I was going to, and then I, I got scared. <laughs> I, I got, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> fucked up. Oh, sorry, he said no swing in the back. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Are you okay? Yep. <laughs> yep. We go. I say I broke the first rule immediately. No, uh, you're fine. Don't worry. I can just like I can. Eat, <laughs> to be fair, I probably just keep it. It's a one-off. It's just because it's because YouTube monetization. See, I want to make money from you, Kaden. No, so. that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, I know. I went to say, and I was like, and then I got stage fright. So just like you know, I just settled, okay, and it's fine. Teach no, I totally to understand it. stage fright. Teach you? Okay. So you gotta you gotta go back of your throat, and you gotta hit them with the yes. <clears throat> you pull your okay. effort into it. Yes. That's good. I, that's a fun. Up. Okay, it's live on a podcast. I'm never doing that again because I don't think I'll be able to. But I'll take that. That's a good sign. <laughs> also, Spain have just scored to make it 2 1 in the 119th minute. Sorry, I'm watching Wait, the let's football. Go. I'm sorry, okay. I just, <laughs> it's fine. I'm going to be locked in. I just, every time there's a score update, I think it'd be funny for law purposes. You don't watch football, do you? I don't know. Uh, so it doesn't mean anything to. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in, Kaylin. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, been up to anything interesting? Um, not really. I got back from uh, TwitchCon and I've just kind of just been chilling because obviously I got back home and I was dying because I had a stomach bug. Um, but ever since we have been, yeah, no, nothing, nothing interesting. Lamau, we've just been, been relaxing. It's been kind of sick. It's been nice to chill. Which one did you? Did you? Which one do you have? Did you have the neuro neurovirus or did you eat from the kebab uh, stand? Eat from the kebab place. Uh... It was. It, uh, I'm pretty confident. And on my end, it was food poisoning, not uh, the the COVID variant. Well, your entire group who ate from there by like two people got it, so I'd, I'd like to. Assume yeah, so. it was unfortunate. Have you all thought about like leaving a, a health complaint, or probably just not do it? I personally don't really care that much to reach out about it. Again, it's in the past. I, I, in their defense, if I was to think of like the nicest argument, we we went there probably around when they were going to close anyway, and they were surprised by like twenty people that all were trying to fast order. I don't think they were really prepared to cook for that many people. Which I guess in th in that case, they probably shouldn't have served us in the first place. But I could probably understand in their case, if I was working there, I'd be stressed. Oh, so what they did was they got annoyed because it was about to close out of spite, just said, screw it. Uh, made yeah, yeah, yeah. So, course, that's, your course, that so was... that's your argument screwed over now. <laughs> so you're trying to make it a positive and I've just ruined it for you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we can go with that. Uh, I've I've had food poison before. I ate at Frankie's and Benny's, and I ate, like I went with my uh, my girlfriend, and uh, she got the carbonara. I don't know why I'm giving you this story. I'm giving you the story. I don't care. It's my podcast. Uh, <laughs> she got the carbonara, uh, and I got a chicken burger. And when I lifted it up, it felt like really really light. Um, but I ate mm. it anyways. And then that same night, I just got so ill. Um, I, I was no, on a call with Goldmill. It's the worst feeling. It's when NPCs were still a thing, and I uh, I was okay. in a, I was on a call with Goldmill, and we were editing both of us, and I said, "Oh, bro." back and i went to the toilet my stomach was just killing me and then bang i was yeah rude worst feeling ever but it's fine because you, you you sound like you're better i'm no i'm, I'm definitely I'm, better that was ages ago my ones i'm good as well so it's great <laughs> glad you're cured of your food poisoning from a while <laughs> thank you i've had it twice now i can't remember how i got it oh, the first God. time but i've had it twice and it's just like it's such a horrible feeling but it's okay. Before we carry on the podcast then, I always like to give the introduction here for you to let us know who you are. Who are you? What do you do? If you have a fun fact for us today. Uh, so I'm Kaylin. Um, there isn't really much I can add to that's really like, I've got, I've got no nicknames. It's just my name. I do Minecraft, you know, like a, like a lot of these other Minecraft people that you have on your podcast, Lamau. Uh, I predominantly play in events. I do parkour stuff, a lot of parkour stuff. I'm a little bit of a parkour addict. I like to help people get better at that attribute of Minecraft because it's one of the main and probably the only things I can confidently be like, yeah, I can probably help you get better at that. And yeah, that's pretty much where most of my online 
online presence is at the moment in terms of like parkour tutorials, doing parkour streams, and then, you know, a little bit good at Minecraft events. We, we do love a little bit cheeky Minecraft event gameplay. Uh, but I was actually looking at like statistics just for like helping with making teams. Not that we base off this, it was just more of a curiosity thing. Uh, mm. In in Mayhem, in the three events out of the six, so we've we've been around for six events now, minus the seventh one, which is going to be this month. Uh, you've, yeah. played, uh, you've played like bi-monthly events essentially. Uh, so you didn't yeah. play 26. In 27, you played third. Uh, you yeah. didn't play 28. Uh, in 29, you placed second. You Let's didn't go. play Birthday Battle. And then in Pride, you paced third again. So you have a pretty good consistency in Mayhem. I get third a lot from what I've noticed from my stats, um, which I, I'm not like, that's not a bad thing. I'd rather consistently get third than get like first and then eighth. I mean, I, I take what I can get. And so basically, you're actually a third frag. Oh, uh, yeah, you got me. That's technically how that works, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a cool team to be a third frag. I'd love to be a third frag. I could chill. Yeah, I, I I had the idea where I'd love to like make like a really, really overpowered event. But then after, especially after even the Minecraft events panel, and just like so many other things i've realized that like a, a, a really op event even if i was to add like incentives or funny little silly things um i don't think it land well i just don't think people would enjoy i it. think inherently op events have the problem of obviously i wasn't on the panel so you, you get my two takes now um i over um stronger event lineups will always have the issues of it'll feel miserable if it's not going well just because everyone is playing so high end anyway like there's no casualty there's no like casualness to it that you get from more events that you get currently Currently, and it gets that weird complexity that you don't really want in an event. So I get why people don't really strive to aim towards it. That's the thing as well. It's like it's not even. I I agree with that. Sorry about the whole like. You know, if if you're like if it's a really overpowered event and like the tenth team, they just lost that motivation. Also, I yeah. think it just ruins the experience of if everyone's trying so hard. I think I think Minecraft events are definitely going more in a way of just for fun or just be silly or yeah. just do good moments. And I think back like maybe a year or so ago, I think they were definitely more let's try our hardest, and then people realize that. Actually, let's just do content. Why are we trying so hard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but you know, you're just naturally gifted. So it's not you trying <laughs> we'll hard. You're yeah. just good. <laughs> I mean, I don't like, I don't practice. I'll, I'll like play for fun if friends ask me to play like on an island or something. And like, I'll play parkour just for the fun of it. I guess that you can consider it practice in the case, I, I, but I just do so much parkour anyway that it's just kind of Im not like it's screwed into my brain now. So I could probably stop for a week or two and nothing would really change that much. What is it then that, you know, made you want to start doing like parkour tutorial? Okay, actually, no, before I ask that, because it makes more sense to do this in like an order. Uh, how did you get so good at parkour? Oh, it's weird. Uh, so I, I just, I've been enjoying platformers for ages and ages to the point that I just really like doing platforming stuff. And then, um, so this is a bit of a side tangent. I used to really, before I got into Minecraft parkour, I got into uh, Roblox parkour, Roblox obby stuff, and like really, no, sure. re re yeah, no, this is this is deep lore. Um, I got really into like extremely hard Roblox obby stuff, and there's like a bunch of intricate glitches and stuff. They have, there was this thing called Duke's Tower of Hell, which used to have an old name, but we'll ignore that. Which is just like really long and punishing obbies, where if you fell, you'd have to restart everything. I was so hooked to them, and then I was as time grew by, I like grew less and less addicted to that, and I started playing more things, which obviously got me into Minecraft parkour. And I was like, man. This this sucks because it was stiff as hell. Um, but as time went by, like obviously you learn more about how oh, momentum, that's like a good thing in Minecraft because that's not a thing in Roblox at all. You can stop after every jump. And you learn like there's force momentum, the, the thing that like lets you do four blocks all the times. You learn that and it goes, whoa, this doesn't feel like luck anymore. And it got like adding up and more and more. The bit where I basically learned the basics and it, it was getting like kind of addicting. Uh, and then I discovered um, Zero Miner and that server has so much on it. I've been playing on that like four years now. And I just keep getting. I just, I just love Aquaman. man. The movement, movement is just so fun because it's so, it's, it's individual. It's not like you don't need someone else to do it. You just need the thing to exist to do it yourself. And it makes it really fun to just log on and be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this hard thing today. It's just fun. Whereas PvP, it'd be like, I'm gonna do this a hard thing, but I'm gonna suck because ten people are better than me, and I'm scary. I always used to think it was called false momentum until so like I think it was like after my false. second video or something. So I thought someone was like, it's called false momentum. And I was like, oh, oh no, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. I mean, it, it didn't work. It sounded like I was saying the right thing. So, you know, no one really questioned me on it. No, I learned I learned it with, uh, obviously, we're not the name thing. I learned Force Momentum wrong for like two years. I was doing it wrong for two years, but I was still kind of doing it right. I was just oh, doing so. it super. So how Force Momentum works. Okay, we're getting like budget tutorial here is um, you're meant to like jump at the back of the block and sprint 
whenever. Just as long as you sprint before you start falling, you'll get enough speed to just do far jumps. But what I used to do, because I this is how I was taught it, is I used to be told you need to sprint at the peak of your jump. And if you do that, it still works for four block, but you're making it stupidly unnecessary tight for no reason. So once I learned you could just sprint immediately after pressing the space bar, it just became more free flowy and it was way easier to just do fast instead of you know shifting the going for you know you know when you do stuff more and more you get into the mental process of just being able to just naturally do it but yeah. when there's less so when there's less steps it's easier but when there was more steps back with like the sprinting at the top the top of the jump you would shift to the back and go okay now i need to do the w in space and then you're like you're mentally thinking okay i have to sprint in like a second but now it's just like shift back jump sprint cool epic and then you win it, it feels good yeah no yeah i uh yeah no i agree that is all 100 percent <laughs> correct I hey so some you... people will get this parkour slang i <laughs> no, I got, I got you. I understand the parkour slang, and so does everyone else Let's who listens to the podcast. We all understand it, so it's fine. <laughs> what about the tutorial? I mean, I, I, I can clearly see by, uh, by how you're talking right now that you love the idea of, you know, kind of explaining stuff to people. Uh, mm. But why did you decide to start making the, the parkour tutorials? So I think the first culprit was Space Brownies because they wanted to know what a Pessy was, and I recorded a video. Fun. It's like, oh, this would be a fun way to explain it, and I explained it in like a really budgety versions of what the videos are like now to be long as like what is up space brownies oh you want to do a pessy is that you do it and it would be in like that like energetic voice and i posted it in a friend group server and i did it like two or three more times and then they started pestering me going this would be really good to make the shorts and i was like are you sure and then i did <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got good reception from it publicly and well from the people that actually wanted to get better at parkour so the, to the point where they kept begging me to keep going and going and that's why there's like 21 of them at the moment I took a break but I've been people want me to go back into making more so probably should soon if it, if it works and it helps you grow then why not do it right yeah and it's also helping people which I like exactly. I'm glad to hear so, what about the yeah no I didn't wait really like what about the yeah that was good that was, uh, I don't know How, no, what that was about good that, you're, you're on the right track why do you why that, you decide to start saying that <laughs> no reason it was just like i i started just saying random i i do a thing where i will stay close to a like a terminology or like a, a, a thing as like a click because it's just how i am as someone that talks where i'll like catch on to a thing and say it a bunch in this case i didn't catch on to something i just said it once and i got a laugh in the vc so then it sticked and we just kept going and it was like oh i can do yes i can do no ho ho and then we had like a bunch of other like clicks in it which is like the what that's crazy and the there's a thing you can do and those four things are just like stuck around and there's no origin to it it's just kind of there so essentially it's just that meme of like you're standing there and you make one joke and everyone's surrounding you is laughing you're like oh my god it, it. it's got it's turned into like the say the line bar meme um you know what that one is yeah uh, is it oh yeah the shrek one is it, is it did, did no, wait, he say say the line no the shrek ones do the roar oh, do the but roar, you're on the right yeah. track it's uh hang on i'll send it in here it's this one I'm probably not gonna watch it, but I'll watch no, it later. Just oh wait. Okay, so yeah. for for a little bit of like in, insane orbit lore here as well. Um so there's this creator on Bedrock Edition called Evelyn. He still makes content. It's just in my mm. old community when I was in it. And he used to trap everyone. He, his thing was like it's like I think Freeberries used to do it, like where he traps people on UHC. Uh, Evelyn would do the same thing on Skywars. And uh I didn't get trapped for like months. And then finally yeah. he trapped me. So I used this meme template of like say the line, and it's like at the bottom is I got trapped by Evelyn. And it's just everyone screaming no <laughs> so i do know it. i just i just yeah my brain just didn't process it no when you you're said good because uh, i think it, i i remember like it was um because we were talking, I was talking to sparkles about it as well uh on on his podcast and it's like with him as well like it's like that thing of oh creeper oh man like it's gonna get to a point <laughs> kaylin when you're gonna you're gonna it's too many people are gonna ask you to say the line and then you're gonna be like no i don't want to say the line anymore and people are like set a line set a line <laughs> so, I would no don't say the line but don't do it uh, did you uh because I, I i sadly missed it because uh i i decided to show up to the convention with aj and mighty and i didn't get until later did you say yeah. the line like on stage or god no, no. why i not? was already so no i was already so stressed that was like the uh, there's no way i could have done anything like internet -y on that stage that was the, that was the most anxiety inducing thing ever what what even happened on that stage i've asked about it but we don't actually know what went on so the stage itself was obviously we were sat down they 
they announced uh man we love it when we we see partners reactions to getting partner and they showed like a bunch of clips of people being like super emotional to getting partner and it goes we're gonna crown the next partner right now and that's when i realized that the email i i had gotten with which i haven't brought up here yet uh was lying and i uh because we were sat in a special cool gamer like area of the arena uh they start panning the like light and the camera and it's turning and i'm like ah uh, it points to me uh they tell me to go on stage i go on stage and they just ask me like the bare bone questions of what do you love about twitch and like how are you feeling and i'm just <laughs> stood there so like people told me I, I i've watched this back now and people have told me i have been I, i've been like, i was a good nervous and it was totally fine but i am still completely blank on half the things i said because i was so so nervous but the experience was cool so i actually didn't know what what happened i saw like a few people tweeting about it and i just I had no clue yeah. but like i, I remember I, I think i saw into space about it because you got like seven uh seven seats with you but you was able to get eight people in and yeah apparently like everyone knew what was going on and as soon as they explained the email to me i was like how did you not catch on to that well, like oh we want to get you I... on stage to see your reaction <laughs> right after you had applied for partner like come on but no <laughs> so i didn't connect the dots because i had applied four weeks ago and i got the email two weeks after the application thing but they they like the email you you don't associate the email with a random other thing because every other uh, application for partner at the time had been the the default order response with the yeah just try later lol but you didn't get um, that no i got my uh, the email like the email response was the thank you for like applying and then two weeks later it was an email that wasn't related to twitch it was from mary the the person that was on stage saying like yo we need people uh, affiliates for this super secret affiliate project we just need people to look happy for this new like affiliate thing and then, well, apparently they've done this before. Apparently they did this in a like a in a glitch con in 2020 or something. Uh, and I I I just don't know enough about Twitch, so I didn't know that this had happened before. But when I went to go shower the day of um the the, the stage thing, I go upstairs and apparently well, this is this is alibis from everyone else. They were all talking about how they thought I was going to get partner. So super messed up. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> there were so many red flags on the day as well that I just didn't notice. Like how we were waiting outside for Rob, the guy who was basically being our guide and he was only looking for us even though the email said there was a bunch of affiliates and then also <laughs> at the area with the bunch of like there were there were like things on our chair mine had kaylin f and then the other one around me had kaylin f yes which could have been i i, I kind of forgave with the idea of oh maybe it's just because it was last minute they don't think about email that much and then around me i see i i don't see any other names it's just like twitch staff and um media and it's ugh, fuck, how did i miss all of it but it, it's whatever. It was cool. Like maybe again, it, it's a fun story. I'm gonna give you your. I'm gonna feed you your copium, okay? Because you yeah. know, just, just, just. Uh, you can take this or you cannot take it. I think you were overwhelmed at the really cool opportunity beyond yeah. stage. There you go. Absolutely. And so, due to it, you blanked out and you only locked into the point where you were gonna be brought on stage. <laughs> I was so that told you didn't fumble. during. I was told during the hour that they were like announcing the other stuff. I just looked so stressed, <laughs> waiting for the actual thing to happen. That I just like looked miserable the whole time what i find like absolutely crazy is the fact that like this has happened to our community uh, and and by that i don't mean like to make it about us and take it away from you i just mean i don't mm. think i've ever like talked to someone who has you know had something like this happen and what makes it even funnier is the fact that we scheduled the podcast weeks ago and now you're coming on it's no, like the perfect, perfect time timing. to talk about it so the thing about it though is if you think about it no matter what that statement is true in any community that it's happened to because again i don't really know who it happened to before but other people would have that reaction as well to that person where they'd be like wow this is happening in our community but it kind of just it, it obviously it, i'm not trying to lessen it but it will always that that mindset will always happen no matter what. Just well, I was just trying to pick it up more so than works. like <laughs> it didn't anything. I mean, I think it's just a sort a very very cool thing. I was just trying to make it yeah. like a bit more hype in a sense. It was absolutely very hype. Uh, kind of back to the parkour then i just thought that was like an, a, an amazing transition yeah but i'm gonna i'm gonna transition it you jump off the stage back into zero minor and then you you're probably in the next few days before this podcast comes out gonna do another pure pain marathon Ooh, we do love pure pain <laughs> what what uh, what actually is that like i've watched you play it i learned quite a lot because it's, it's nice to watch you do jumpy jump while i edit the podcast and i always feel bad talking so as soon as i talk you fail so i've just started lurking now uh, but uh, what what is it so pure 
Pay Marathon is a challenge on Zero Miner where it's just every pure pain, uh, not pure pain, uh, pure parkour map on Zero Miner that has the black difficulty because the difficulties are scaled. Um, which I think it's white, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and black. And there's 21 uh, pure black ones, and it's just that back to back to back over and over again. And the first completion that we did, oh god, I think it was August or September, was I think 10 and a half hours, and now it's well as opposed to yesterday it's now down to four hours 23 minutes which is whew, <laughs> a little bit fast how uh how fast do you like in okay it's just not like but taking a bit away of like realism of you being absolutely perfect based on all your fastest splits combined what what would that time roughly add up to like what time what time do you uh, reckon you can get and what time do your current splits add up to i have life split open i think it will tell me right uh, uh best segment there are some of best splits like, where I don't know. I've never used it before. No, I'm just, I'm looking right now. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it doesn't tell me best of some splits, but I could assume if I went off the splits that were solely based on the PPM run and not just what my PB on every map is, the best time I could probably get at the moment is 4.05, but I know sub 4 is possible. You can definitely sub 4. It'd be a nightmare to get, but it will feel so cool. Did they, uh, did they fix that one map that they changed? Like, did they revert it or is it still the same? No, it's still there. It's not, it wasn't broken when they changed it. It's just, it's a change that, like, oh, it's, it's, yeah. it was a big enough change for me to not be used to. But now I'm fine with it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I was just more kind of like, I know it looks broken. <laughs> yeah, so, I get what you mean. It's when you're used to something, I guess, when, it's, when, when it just suddenly changes, you're just like, oh. Yeah. There, then. With, like, getting partner then, kind of just jumping back and forth here. I don't know. We're just walking no, away. It's great. So you, when you went to badge pickup on the Friday, because you were there, because we got the picture of me, you, Faze, and Jack, which, I mean, I, you, it, was, it was a cool picture to get, so I'm happy. I'm ha very happy we got it. But you had the affiliate badge at the time. Uh, so yeah. after the panel, what exactly happened? Because next time I saw you, you had the partner. <laughs> badge so they obviously they knighted me on stage so they took my affiliate badge off and then gave me the partner badge that like the uh, the badge itself so not the lanyard it's gone in probably in the trash because uh i wasn't allowed that back because um it's a security risk since i could just give it to someone else oh yeah um, true but the lanyard, I had to go back and try and get it. It had um, a badge that Masky Z got me, like a like a nice sunflower thing that uh, Sarah Sahara made, and then like a Keyshink sticker on it. And so that was awkward because after the stage, everyone was leaving. I had to rush to a cat cafe that was booked with um, FaZe, Jack, Sandwich, uh, Soul, and Void. But I had to keep telling them to wait. And then Big Man Rob, <laughs> the guy who was biting, uh, guiding us around, went backstage and grabbed it, my goat. So wow. I now have two, lanyard, uh, two lanyards, two lanyards, two silly like aqua profit i also got a masky z badge my one said inside mc on it i was so happy i was like oh my god go. it means so much and then a the little card as well we got the little custom cards what was your yeah. one say yeah my i think mine's i i'd have to check if this is in my bag but i'm pretty sure it says there's a thing you can do and i think it looks cool as fuck mine uh, mine has my name inside inside orbits in the top left and i have like two hearts and it's like me doing a little pose in the masky z suit skin which is now my like main skin then in the yeah. bottom it says inside mz podcast i was like oh my god i podcast guy <laughs> what <laughs> no uh, that's sick what was your what was your we might as well talk about it because i mean me and aj recorded our podcast which would have come out two days before this one we might as well talk about it while we're here what was your twitch fun experience like um so i've, I've never to a convention before so uh i didn't really like know what to expect while going in with all like meeting people and walking around and what to do in a convention so i think that's uh, ignoring the community so if i went by the convention itself there definitely was a lot less there than i thought there would be but so but like with the community added on like the experience was great i loved it it was so cool just like meeting people pretty much every like 10 15 minutes for two days and then obviously I ended off with rivals mcc which was you know amazing to watch and then the after party Ooh, then the after party after party was good if you ignore the the food issue we went and played mini golf mini golf was baller oh played that's pool as well. i don't actually remember seeing you at the after party i just saw you were there because of the kebabs but i don't we actually were in remember. the same pool game we played the pool game against oh, me and you were. that's that's so messed up oh my god wait no didn't okay. see me the after I'm party so all right oh, no, i'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> i blocked out the first pool game because i did play i played bad in it so i only remember the second one where i won with um <laughs> with dark craft I, I believe i was with or oh, dark swift sorry uh. dark swift oh so that's where you went that's what i meant i don't i said let me run it i don't remember seeing you at the after party after we played pool there yeah we, we were go. all upstairs you went off to play mini golf oh. yeah they had it was a cool one it was the one where you like you get points for uh instead of uh how many like shots it takes you so there was like cool 
bonus things you could go for. It was sick. Did you win? Yeah. Did you actually win? Yeah. Oh. I, I, I won by a lot. <laughs> oh, who are you up against? Uh, my group was me. Oh my God, me, Sam, Sam Dong Phone, I, uh, Aragon Telly. Um, I think it's Aragon's girlfriend, Sushi, and yeah, then Dijon. Yeah. Uh, or Dijon, Dijon. I keep saying it wrong. I, I, I've called them Dijon when we were interacting on a podcast. Dijon mustard. Okay, I'll say Dijon. Let's go. If it's wrong, that was then group. oh well, they, they'll be fine. They'll live. Uh, the, the convention itself, I agree. Um, I went to Paris last year, did a round trip, and I, and I've publicly said it now i went with my girlfriend this year uh, i didn't i didn't really publicly say about my girlfriend um I met, i've referenced her but people now know yeah. so i was introducing her to people at the um at the at the convention but we went last year to paris and met up with a crowd called pateo 25 and we did a round trip and if i'm honest after like i didn't know anyone in the community i was just fresh to it i joined the community in april and then oh, the convention was in july so it's like very little time to know people i said hi to space little interaction with jack and stuff um sat in like the group there's like a big circle of, like wolfie damn a few of like the blog was people none of them knew who i was didn't know really know who any of them were so it was really awkward but like this yeah. year um i've always said it as much as i love twitch one the convention itself in the nicest way possible is very underwhelming um as opposed to like you said it's very much carried by the community and who you go to meet for instance i was just constantly like talking to people non-stop because uh, that's just that's what i do believe it or not i talk to people loads uh so like the convention itself was carried by i mean like for instance you guys went off to a cat cafe for like four, you were gone for like four or five hours give or take no we we're going for t- uh, oh, we were oh. we were like we, we got back at I think we left at half 12 and got back at 2 but we didn't go back into the venue for 15-20 minutes because we were meeting people outside so we came out to meet you because I was with um, Mighty Brothers and AJ oh yeah I remember that I saw you again I was like oh my god hi nice partner badge <laughs> thank you did um did you predict the winners for MCC Live then uh, no I also didn't really predict a winning team to begin with to be well, fair in your head kind of though, like... not publicly but in your head uh, well even then I well I mean no I, I'm pretty sure that the, the team I wanted to win and the team I thought was going to win both didn't happen but I'm still happy that Cyan won like yeah, obviously that. Wolfie winning is huge what team were you rooting for do you, do you mind sharing uh obviously well, I, the main the main team I was rooting for was just pink just because obviously I talked with Sandwich a lot so I just wanted Sandwich to oh, have yeah, a funny goofy it. moment but it, was, it, was, it worked either way because at least one of the newcomers won Oh yeah, definitely. Talking of like MCC, for instance, uh, we met, we mentioned it a little bit earlier. You play in a lot of Minecraft events. You know that? What? No way. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> what What is your What is your Minecraft event roster? I play. Well, if I if I go off the basics, it's like I play um, Origins. I play Minecraft Mayhem. I play I play Minecraft Mania, and I play Pandora's Box. And then there's also like on the side tangent, I also like dabble in playing in Blissful. I played in like a Pomeroo. Uh, and then I like I. Just like I like playing Minecraft, so I'll play Minecraft when I can play Minecraft. Uh, how did you like? I know, cause once again, referencing something earlier of like you having a consistently bad ish I mean, that's your average because the third, second, third. That's your average in Mayhem is third. So that's some. Yeah. So tried that. Uh, how did you get so good at like the general thing of events? Because I mean, looking at the channel, Kaylin now on your YouTube channel. Two years ago, you was an MCC. Te- Are you still an MCC tester or no? I am still an MCC. Ah, uh, so yeah, you're an MCC tester. You was in DLC back when you was allowed to make videos by MCC testing you did uh you also played in uh block wars chaos a full controller team which was just crazy to see <laughs> and then uh i believe your most recent video is about block wars as well no uh, it's pb it's uh, about oh, the last two pbs oh apologies um so like no, but, but you are very good at these events uh, how did you get so good at like that uh, slash minecraft as a whole aside from the parkour part the first buff was buying a mouse because i was a trackpad user for way too long i was i think i was on trackpad till like mid 2020 because i was too stubborn to switch because my mindset was like oh well I'm doing pretty fine on trackpad. But then I got like <laughs> destroyed in PvP constantly so badly. I battle sucked on trackpad. Um but then obviously we bought a mouse. Uh I got better, or way better, got used to a mouse. Um I think testing helped a little bit in this sense of just game essence with just knowing how team fights kind of are and how to like IGL in team games, because Say I've played so much freaking Minecraft now that I'm used to playing teams of four stuff that like and just having that safety net of yo you you're pretty confident in in parkour like mo- movement has its W's because it's just useful in everything parkour has its W's because it's again useful in pretty much everything my PvP skills aren't as high as most of the people you think of as like great players but I think I like counter it from just being a good IGL and a good team like team player and knowing how to do good in team games because a lot of people that are good at vp tend to like choke in those games it just adds up 
it works out in the end i mean like yeah being skilled in multiple different areas or like you're not even like fully skilled but just knowing what you're doing in multiple different areas kind of has that buff to it and even recently i started learning speed running and that's got me a bit better at bingo and just like survival knowledge i'm quite useful the more i talk to people and the more people i find out or are, are, are in mcc testing at least still in mcc testing the more i get shocked because <laughs> <laughs> you're just like not not in a negative way and i don't know what i would expect but you're just not someone i'd expect to be in mcc testing if that makes any sense oh yeah <laughs> Oh, oh no! It's what just because I've mean? been in it for so long, so it's like it's hard to really like. I mean, I used to just be known as well. He's an MCC tester. He's like pretty good at MCC testing, and now it's like he plays in these events. Oh, he's also an MCC tester. That's kind of quirky. Like it's it's not like it's it's like lowered down in the rankings of priority to me now. That it's it's still like there as a personality trait, but it's not. If if you meet me and you didn't know I was a tester, you're not gonna learn I'm a tester very easily. But I mean, I didn't know until just now. So yeah, because I, I mean, I, okay, I mean, obviously I knew because your video. But aside from the video, I would have never known. Yeah, the video is the only like main feature you can learn, I guess. Um, say hey, something else about tournaments. Oh, this is so frustrating. Did you did you ever apply to any of the MCC Risings? Uh, no, because uh, well, testers were allowed to apply, and they hit you with the like, you can try. And I just read that as like, <laughs> no. So I just didn't bother. They look, they look fun to see people apply for though so that was like a, it's a fun community thing to keep an eye on what are uh what's some what are some of your favorite like minecraft event moments even if it's not regarding you just but something that general? resonates in your head yeah you know? It can be yeah, about I you, like... it can not be about you, it's your call. See, the worst part is I barely keep up to just watching events thoroughly enough to remember, like, moments. So the main thing, if I if genuinely, I'm such a simp, the main thing that can comes to mind to me is just, like, the Kel uh, PB4 Sky High bit where their team went from, I think, like, sixth to first. It's, like, it's stuck in my head because it's the main thing I remember is, like, oh, you did really good in the PB before, Kalen, but, it like, Kel did this next PB, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> just like you cooked and now someone kind of added it it's like it's hard to remember a lot of mcc moments as well because obviously since we since we played so many like tests it's hard to remember what happened in the actual mcc but that doesn't like i mean i guess it i guess it does matter like what happens in the main mcc but like because you're actually because play, you're playing tests specifically you it only really matters for like you <laughs> or your yeah. like experience in mcc at least in the test aspects if that makes any sense at all it's just hard to remember a moment and then try to remember if that moment was like live or in in testing <laughs> i mean you can still kind of like give it off and then if it was live it was live if not then we get to hear a cool moment behind the scenes unless that'd get you in trouble which i don't think it should you just not i mean I, I guess like it. one default thing i can think of pretty easily is just that like it dominates that a uh, dominant Dominant run um, Techno had in the Halloween Ace Race ages ago. That's like, oh my god, what? It's like MCC. I can't associate what MCCs are, but I think it's like MCC 10. It would have been a very long MCC yeah. ago. Yeah. God, that's so long ago. Like, I don't remember much recent stuff just because I. Like, I, I will watch one perspective, and if that one perspective doesn't have a pop-off moment, it's like, oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, and you're just like, because I don't really re-watch. I mean, I, I sometimes do if I'm doing, like, research, but I won't go out of mm. my way to, like, re-watch an MCC from multiple different perspectives. I know a lot of people do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sound like, I don't know, actually, I'm not going to sound anything. God, uh, I just don't have the time with yeah. the podcast and stuff. I just don't have the time to be watching multiple different POVs or, like, fully lock into them if I'm wanting to edit. Like, sometimes maybe it's, like, background footage I'll slap one up, but... Aside from that, I'm just edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit No, absolutely, I get you. Uh, what's the deal with that 250 by 250 square? I actually don't even understand <laughs> um, it. There isn't much dealio with it. It's just um, one day I was going, I want to stream, but I really don't want to think. So I built a 150 by 150 platform. And then um, a week later, I was like, eh. I want to make it a bit bigger. So I made it 250 by 250 and then we made it 300 by 300 and now it's 350 by 350 and it's just going to keep growing whenever I want to stream something casual. Oh, so is it the same square you just add to it? Yeah, it's, it's, because um, that's just how maths work. Every time you add to it, it's still a lot of blocks. Uh, Like I think, I mean, I can quickly Google this now. No, I just thought, I, I just meant like, I thought you restarted every single time. I didn't know you just No, no, oh my God, that would be torture. Square. Um, <laughs> I think I've spent... I mean, I've only spent 11 hours on that square. It's not like astronomically long. It's like two PPMs a week ago. Uh, but they're just, it's been over four streams. So I think like no block placing platform stream has been over three hours yet. So it's just been like a nice chill thing to do. What's your, uh, what's your, uh, what's the method to your madness of the color change how do you decide which block goes where most of them is just like at the start it was this block sounds cool i want to hear it and then it turned into going okay i'm running out of blocks in the inventory i'm kind of struggling to think of what to pick of 
and I like I just grab four or find them random ones. And then there's also uh, a channel point option where people can like request blocks as long as they're not annoying. So like like so no uh, trap doors, no um, un- unplaceables, <laughs> no no like UI blocks. So smithing table, for example. Oh no, yeah, sa- sand would be crowd mean. playing. Yeah, oh, god. Because since I do it in the the like actual method instead of placing it normally uh i can't i have to be careful with what block i pick oh well, like you, you, actual method you mean like speed bridging method so the method fine? is the melon method so basically i learned this when uh fulham was practicing for his and rec raps um 100 million melon thing they had a method for making a module uh which was like look 45 make your right make your uh placing block a mouse uh, a mouse button thing 45 hold w and a and like the mouse thing and you would just like place in a straight line and you wouldn't have to do anything so you wouldn't like misplace by it's, it removed human error and also you'd be constantly moving so it's just faster than just like shifting over and over again oh that's i don't and know all, the, to all of the training for that moved into the pl- the platform stuff <laughs> Uh, how do you keep track of the time then? Because I know you have a timer, but how do you save timer? Is it on your... Uh, so with the lovely power of live split, you can uh, just leave the file entirely because it's just a timer. There's no splits in it. It's just a number. And then when you reopen, there's an option to just start the timer at a certain number. So you just change it from zero to when you just ended the stream. Oh, cool. That's convenient. I know that you're like on like doing pure pain marathon. It was always splitting, but I don't know how you do it. Do you do it manually? I'm assuming. Uh, Yeah, I do. So there... I. It, I made sure to make it a yeah. I made sure to make it a key that I can't just accidentally press. So for me, it's Alt C, which is kind of annoying because there's no Alt on my keyboard. There's Option, and I keep I keep mistaking it for something else. But once I'm like ten splits in, it's fine. Uh, You get used to it. It's fun. It, it's it's very muscle memory once you're I'm sure you say you're like you're 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 running to the end of the map and you're going okay I'm getting ready to alt C. I use a uh, I use a ten pound keyboard so you know oh, I buy everything on it it's great uh, scary got, keyboard. What's what's scary about it? Ten pounds is in like the currency or like the weight. Ten pounds is in the currency. I'm not lug- lugging okay, good, around good. a ten pound weight <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> I'm scared of using cheap keyboards because I don't want I want the error to be my fault not the keyboard's fault. So I had expensive keyboards and I did have expensive keyboards. Um, uh, but I realized, like, I just, I, I just keep breaking them. <laughs> so, yeah. to, to like, to not keep breaking them, I was just like, you know what? I'll just get a cheap keyboard and then we'll go from there. So now I like use ten pound keyboards constantly. That's fair. Aside from Minecraft, obviously you do like do a lot of Minecraft content, but that's not the only mm. thing you do. You have a, you have other skills in other areas. I, I'm, I'm not a small even, little other skill. Uh, so I know the rough bases, and I'm gonna be dead honest with you that I actually don't know like the full thing. Yeah. What is it that you do? Um, um, so besides doing Minecraft stuff, I also play this card game called Card Fight Vanguard, and I bet no one will know what that means. It's basically uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like it's like a variant of Yu-Gi-Oh Magic Pokemon. Uh, it's card game stuff, and I'll play it. I, I've played it since um, 2014, and I like travel with a bunch of friends to play it competitively because they have like circuits uh that i like qualify you for worlds in the second half of the year so around august to january february uh where we'll basically go around europe playing competitively for each format and then hopefully do well enough to qualify for worlds and then go to worlds in february super fun and it's like really good hobby for me to invest in when i'm not doing minecraft how does the game how does it even work like the card game uh, and if you're if so, you're if you're uh what's it what's the word in for like Gui- a guide for dummies. I'm, but I'm the dummy. <laughs> Both players start the game. You have to deal six damage. Uh, there are a lot of annoying things that stop you from dealing damage. Uh, if you deal the six damage, you win. If you are dealt six damage, you lose. No. So you're. It's kind of like prize pool in Pokemon. For Pokemon has like six prize cards, and every time you KO a Pokemon, you get a prize card. In this case, instead of getting a thing for doing a thing, you they get a thing for you. Do- it's like the opposite. Do you have your own cards that you buy, or is it like luck of the draw? Yeah. Or is it RNG? Like- yeah, like. You have a deck, like a, like a built deck that's like got um, cards that you put in for like a game plan and, sh- and stuff like that. So literally if someone puts in a stronger card than you, you're kind of just screwed. Well, that's if you're playing a bad deck, yeah. But um, don't play a bad deck. If you play a good deck, there won't be stronger cards in the game. But, but the, it's a, for the good deck, are they like more expensive cards? Is it the same cards uh, in general? I think it depends. It's expensive if you take too long to buy the deck. If you keep, a, if you keep track of the meta and like what's going to be good, because obviously, Jap- well, not even obviously, Japan gets their sets um three to four months before we do because there's, there's the english format and the jp format so if you keep track with the jp format you get like kind of knowledges in in advance to hey this is going to be good soon you should probably pre-order this or you should probably get this like in advance before it spikes in price which tends to happen a lot um and then there's obviously like this the game knowledge of seeing a card reveal and going yeah 
this is insane and buying four of it in advance really quickly I, it, it is expensive it's an expensive hobby in in theory but obviously you make a lot of your money back with just like the game itself weird wait why'd you buy why'd you buy four? Oh, uh, uh decks you play uh the cards you play in the deck you can play up to four copies of it so obviously you um, want more of the same card because consistency so wouldn't it be like an investment idea then if you know it's going to spike in price to just buy multiple and then just resell them though that's called being scummy those are the those are the things you like that's how you ruin communities because oh, um sorry. there's a <laughs> My no, bad. you're fine. You're, you, you've got the right business my idea. People do do that. Uh, the problem with that is, it as someone that plays community-wise, it's not very nice for it, the people that don't have the money to just chuck on cards that like slowly have to build their deck to be like, oh, does anyone have this card? And you go, yeah, I've got 20. And they, and they, they give you the look. Well, I just, I just more meant like resell it on like eBay or like... Or you, you can, you know, and like people will do I, that. I didn't but mean like... to like screw people over in person. <laughs> I meant like resell. Sorry, now I feel bad. Because that, that happened is because what will happen is the card game will have promos and, and this is the big thing that we have on our end where promos aren't like in the set and you have to get them by like playing in locals and stuff and those promos some stores won't get and those are the, that's the stuff that people like they if they get hoarded oh my god the price spikes so much and it's just like so like irky to look at have you ever like copied someone's deck then that's beat you <laughs> no, we're not beating me but I, i've copied decks before tournaments going like yeah this is this list makes sense because i'm more of a like i'm better at playing a good deck than i I am at building a good deck and i'm perfectly okay with saying that because i'm not good at deck building i'm just good at playing the game i've really never understood how like card games like this work like why is there different fair. cards and how like i'm guessing you're like but how do you even prove the cards are real what if you just rock up with like a card you made cards usually have like more things uh to prove they're real like a like a foil sticker that has the like trademark of the company or something like i think that's what Yu Gi Oh does and pokemon has like a for high quality cards they have like an embedded logo somewhere on the card um there's a way a card game Games usually have like small things to that are really hard to counterfeit. Have you got any like really valuable ones? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, obviously, since I went to Worlds in February, I have my like the card I you, you get an entry promo, um, for qualifying, obviously, because you know, good job. Uh, and that card, I think, let me see, I have seen it sold for, um, I think two grand. Jeez. That card is nice and protected in my room. Uh, oh, is it like, is it graded or no? No, I don't grade my cards because I, I, I like using high quality cards, so I will use the card. Um, so if I was the grader, I wouldn't get like a 10. But uh, again, a lot of people, if it was graded, it would be way more than two grand. Again, I don't really like play for the, the monetary value. Like the card we got is a staple in so many decks that I want to use it. <laughs> Looks cool. That feels like so like interesting though that like you can rock up with a card that only you got because you qualified and it's like significantly stronger than the base deck. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's a, it's a, sorry, it's a, it's a promo, but it's like a, it's an alternate art of a card that already exists. Oh, so it's not like it's my a, God. It's not, okay. you don't get like a better card just for getting to, that'd be so That's messed up. Fool. That's why for this entire time I didn't realize there's like a new art. I feel like no, the no, it's like just a cool art whatever. that has like a, like a hot print and stuff. Um, oh God, you sorry. Okay. So you just no, show you're up the good. flex of your like design. No, card. yeah, it's flex material. And then like 40 or 50 people have it. If you get them signed, are they unusable? Uh, it depends on the, if it's in, uh, no, I'm just going to go with no. Uh, it like depends on the circumstances and where the signature is, but it's like, that's like penance. Yeah, if it's like blocking it and it looks counterfeit then if it the blocks the like the effect then yes but then also at the same place like in higher end tournaments you can't use it it's more like casually you'll be fine some lower level tournaments you'll be fine but like higher end it wouldn't be allowed without getting like too personal here then so please just answer this if you can how do you afford to constantly keep traveling to these events travel is so cheap <laughs> yeah but I, still but still where I, does the money come to... from is what i mean what well, some of it comes from Twitch. Some of it comes from like like casual work. Um, I like, obviously I used to have a. Like, well, I'm currently in between jobs because I used to have a finance job. Oh, and, like travel. Travel is like, say for example, I go to I I travel for five venues. Um, and each of them would be like I don't know ninety. Hundred because we're getting like cheap Airbnb, we're getting cheap flight, we're getting cheap everything. We're not spending much on food. We're more left for the tournament, and then obviously the stuff we get at the tournaments we can just sell immediately. The entry promo sometimes you can get it and then just sell it, and that's just like your 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 com repaid for. So you you get some travel costs basically repaid. Pretty nice. That's cool. And when you say we, are you in like a clan or? Uh, clan is a kind of a big friend group, a very big friend group. <laughs> there's there's usually like there's a that we we're in like we have like a Discord server Sorry, that I helps just sort be stuff funny out. To call it a clan, nah, so. you're good um there's uh i think 30 40 of us in a discord 
board that we tend to travel with. But obviously, it's not all of us that go. Like, 20 of them don't leave the country. And then the people that do leave the country, they usually... Half of them are awful at planning, and I'm in the, the half that are, you know, good at planning. So... I'll hear them complain that, oh, I, I can't go to this country because it's 200 plus. Me sitting in the corner of the room, 40 return flight, going, no, no, it's not. And they're like, where'd you find your flight? And I'll, I'll tell them it's just on the app, like the main app you'd use. Say, for example, for Ryanair, I just say like the Ryanair app. And then I just, I don't get it. I don't get how people can struggle with travel, but at the same you time, only, I've done you only it so take much. a backpack, right? So it's really cheap. As yeah, so like, you have no check in bag or anything. Whenever I fly, I always take like a carry on bag. So I got my backpack ah. and then a carry on bag. Because well, when I go, I don't just go for the weekend i normally go for like three or four days yeah so i can't survive sense. on three or four days but i really wanted to do like a um i'm going off to germany <coughs> in uh, in august to, to meet up with yeah. a friend and i really wanted to experience what it'd be like to just go away for the weekend and do just a, a fly like that the issue is to get to stansted uh, for a ryanair flight oh my god i hate getting to stansted with the stansted <laughs> express alongside the flight it was like 10 pounds more expensive than the flight i'm getting from another airport and mm. and with and this one i get to take a carry-on bag with me and it's like 10 pounds cheaper and it's really it's like 200 pound return which i'm not gonna play which is a bit expensive but it's also not horrible considering i won't be i'll be staying in their house when i'm in germany so it'll be it'll work out if i if i could pick where i could fly from every time i'd always fly from gatwick because i could get a direct train there it'd be so convenient i know the, it, um, it'd still be it would still be long but it's just easier i know like from living like from from having friends who live in like more london area like i live in london but like i'm not mm. close to these but i know like the apparently the elizabeth line goes straight to uh heathrow and i know like yeah, the, the dlr or whatever it's called dlr goes to um london city airport so like yeah. it, it it's they're, they're pretty ideal situations if you're living in london i, I don't heard. think i've ever flown from london city so every time someone brings that airport up i don't think it's real <laughs> it's, uh, it's 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 it looks like it's an it from from google maps it looks like it's in a convenient <laughs> location so. It's near Stratf It's at Stansted, which is like the main one of the main area. Stansted? Oh my god, it's not near Stansted. It's near Stratford, which is one of the main. Uh, it's got like the one of the West Fields in London, so it's like conveniently placed in that regard. Yeah. So Worlds, uh, you you mentioned it's in like February. Uh, so if, if you qualify, where is it? Where does that take place? So it's almost always in Japan. It's just once it's been in California because of COVID, because uh, uh, Japan was still closed for travelers, so they moved. They made it in America instead. It's like always in Tokyo, and it's it's just cool because whenever we go, I mean, half of us basically get free trips, and the other half just go for the experience, and we'll basically turn it into like a ten day trip. Super fun. How does that like? I don't I don't think it would, but just it just for this question's sake, yeah. How does that affect your like content creation side of it? So we would go for like ten days in February, but if I like in a streaming standpoint, I would get back. Obviously, I'd stream, but I wouldn't be too detrimented from it because, again, like say I just wasn't in an event for a month, that's almost the same thing for some people. Like there's, there's people that will like watch it, um, people that play events well just for the event, so that that viewership wouldn't go away just because I'm gone for two weeks. The viewership that would go are like the the people that watch the more casual stuff because they go, they'd be like, oh, where did where did Kalen go? I hate this guy, and then. <laughs> <laughs> they'd realize like a month later oh he's back and then society gets saved but again we're not we're not big enough yeah, at all that to where it hurts i think what's um and unless like some of these people are in both communities also what's it like having two different communities ah it's weird i i will say internet slang terms at uh card game locals and i'll get i'll get like a look from a friend uh because i forget like oh yeah they don't really like they don't, they don't really like relate with uh people smile or like pog or like people pat um <laughs> yeah and then, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly like they they they, <laughs> they 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 don't get that either but like some of them have seen it. like my close friends know um i do both and obviously with the fucking partner reveal thing on stage um a lot of my friends figured it out uh so that was funny um explaining oh, they didn't that even know them. you streamed well no like some most of them did like the, the people i care like i care about in that community knew i streamed like the people i didn't like they dm me going oh congrats and I, I, I mean, yeah thanks and it's it, I don't think it's a bad thing being in two communities. It's just like, it's the same thing. It just, it's just, you go, it's personality one and personality two, except they're almost basically the same. It's just like some things like I mentally will say in one and I'll mentally say in the other. And it's like distinguishing the two, I guess. It's, uh, it's just that thing of like, you don't mix, um, you don't mix friend groups, right? I mean, it's even like with uh, you know, some of my, I, I don't really have any IRL friends anymore. Cause I mean, it's not a lonely thing. It's more so just, okay, I guess the best way to put it is like with, with work, right? Like if I went, mm. I, if I went into work, I, I think I think in the group chat, right? Someone put something and like they didn't mean it in the term that I know 
show it as online and they put yeah. it and everyone was like laughing at for like no that's not that's not funny yeah. why have you just put that word I, I can't remember what it was it wasn't anything bad um i just like i probably someone got along the lines of like pog i think someone got like a promotion they went pog and i was like what <laughs> you're like you're you're 35 you have no, two kids no if someone gets a promotion and they get a pog if they say pog i'd be so happy for no them. but why are you why are they saying that why would like why do you know what that word means <laughs> that's what i mean like, it's just because like, my, my work my um colleagues are uh, older but what they know the podcast as is um because i want to talk about the podcast when i can in person because it's nice to kind of just blast some steam to people who have no clue what's going on it just feels better sometimes so i said like oh i edit for my friend's podcast and i social media manage it for it uh, and i was like oh, i've built a team of like 11 people this is crazy little did i know it's my entire thing but you know like whenever i explain stuff to them they just have no clue what i'm talking about and but it's nice because it's nice to just waffle into thin air sometimes uh, as long as there's someone yeah. at least listening and i think i provide that with the podcast which is ironic that's kind of what i do i let people waffle into i mean i say my two cents and i'm talking a lot here and i apologize if, if i'm talking too much but no, yeah, just how it. Works. i am a yapper i think i'm a certified yapper so i can relate to this what is like a very if, if you have one what is like a top 10 coldest kalen tournament moment coldest kalen tournament moment well it's really easy for me to distinguish like my most like coldest moments it's because because there's only two events i've come first in so it's easy just to go to those and i think my coldest moment has to be getting first in sky high in pb7 when i made a diamond axe and people freaked out because they didn't know you can make a diamond axe I think I got oh. like six, seven kills that the round as well. Uh, I uh, I do want to clarify. That's amazing. Don't get me wrong. I don't know what card means. game. <laughs> I didn't mean the card. The, the, van, the vanguard is it called? Oh, I mean, like, oh in god, person, it's like, hard to think. No, have you ever good. had a moment think... where like you know you just destroyed somebody or you just played a card like played a move so well and it's just like oh my god. Well, that just happens a lot with the earlier rounds, like the earlier rounds of the day because it's Swiss format, which to explain it means everyone plays like an opponent and then you're pairings throughout the day get based on how you're doing so round ones what well, you'll sometimes get the person that's like oh i play this like i i'm friends with someone that plays this game and i'm just like i live nearby and i'm playing I feel like a friend's deck like those games are of course you you win by landslide but you don't yes that's not cold that's just like they're here to have fun you're here to try and qualify for world you're just how, how dare you? someone's like day yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I, I think the, no, no, this isn't really coldest, but the, the, the most memorable thing I can think of recently was um, last year in Spain, there were, we were in the, um, the finals and like we, there were, te- it, this was a team format. So we were teams of three where your game, your, your team wins if two, two people win their game and where we're one, one and my games are decider and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, to not get anxious, I just start talking in what I will quote my friends. I start talking in streamer mode. So I start talking with a more amplified voice. I like start verbally explaining my like thoughts and stuff and I like <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it I they said it was an entertaining game to watch so I will take what their words are but um that's like the main thing I can remember from card game tournaments in the past like few years okay I guess the coldest if we go by definition of it being like cold is the best um in 2019 uh when I got my first qualification for worlds um the tournament I won um I went 12-0 which is like insane oh crap and then like wait wait but 12-0 is like as in 12-0 is like 12 wins zero losses what is that but it's against like 12 different people as well then sorry I know that's, yeah. that's probably such an obvious answer. oh it, okay. it was a okay not to be pedantic but it was 11 different people because I played against the same person again in finals but um because it's like it's nine rounds of Swiss and then it's it cuts the top eight I was oh, like undefeated you can lose in Swiss. a game of Swiss and still qualify yeah because uh top eight oh, would be I, I think in that tournament it was was like one xo which was me uh four x ones and then three x twos and then uh I, and then everyone gets like a clean slate and then it's just how it works for vanguard is if you get top three qualify for worlds and if you get first you qualify for worlds and get a, a paid invitation so your flight and a com gets paid for so oh, i hate top eight so much top eight is the the, mo- the most stressful game you have to wait an hour before your game because they have to do a deck check so like they have to see if your deck list is correct and they have to te- check if your sleeves are like not sus oh that's good so though. you wait yeah no it's totally good that they do do it you wait an hour for that and yeah. you play your game and if, if you just brick or like it'll get like an unlucky hand it's just so much worse than it happening in swiss and then but after that top four is chill because if you lose you can still win your third place game and if you win it's like holy moly um but now going 12-0 that's the only tournament i've like ever gone undefeated and it oh it felt so good i think that's a cold moment i think that qualifies <laughs> 
<laughs> everyone's coming at you full sending you and just like nah <laughs> is it like so is it like one on one just one game or is it like best of threes against people it depends on the year but mostly it's it's um best of one year so you would uh start your game play it within the 40 minute time limit and then if you finish you win and if you don't finish there's like a different game stat thing you check but that's like not relevant it's kind of mental that you can just like just, you can it can just all be over for you in one go like at least with every like most tournament i mean i guess it's like actual world cup or euros for instance best of three is bubble. weird though because um a lot of ma like, matchups in the in the game are kind of at least tilted towards the turn order you go so best of three can just be a prolonged death if you just got the wrong turn order going on game one if, it, if if both people are like the same skill level and decks have a clear siding on if you want to go first or second best of threes become really weird just because it just turns into well he went first game one so he went first game three so he won and it's like so i just have one pet peeve with best of three obviously i would prefer best of three but like logistically it's just one is better no 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 logistically best of three is better as well oh, but okay. it's more like it's so long and you would have to the, the tournament would need to be more than a day and it would need to be like structured differently to, to work or have like a player cap or stuff like that is it better to go first then always um some decks have like gimmicks for if your opponent has done a thing which they can only do if by a certain point if you go second and some things don't have a restriction so can just like do stuff faster going first it depends it depends what year it is what what meta we're in what format we're we're talking about but it's if you know the deck you're playing you you know the order you want to play in and then like that matters and like your opponent knows it matters as well how is it decided um who goes first and who goes nice roll Oh, literally. What do you just pick? Like one number you think it's gonna land on as closest wins, or you you roll it. You both. It, 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 you can do many different things. Uh, what? There's two different ones that most people do, which is high roll, where you roll two dice, and then the other person rolls two dice and the higher number picks. There's the other option, which is more casual, which is like you declare auto even. Your opponent rolls one dice, and then if it lands on the one they said they pick, and if it lands on the other one, you pick. Okay, I don't know how auto. But even it's works, it's luck based for but... a reason. Like it like it. There's no reason for it to be a skill based thing, or I don't even know what they would do to make it a skill based thing. Fist fight. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the nose who nose starts bleeding first is a loser. I don't is... think the tournament would last very long. I know most people would probably get knocked out and then not be able to play, so it might make it last longer <laughs> in reality. Ah. Then thinking of marketing strategy, see, earn more money by making it longer. <laughs> more entry tickets and stuff <laughs> yeah uh with that then i feel like i've done a pretty good job of covering everything is there anything i missed that you wanted to talk about or have, have we done a good job of talking uh, on every basis no i think we've done a good job i think we've we've got a quality amount of yappage it's not over yet though Kaylin, because we have what? some twitter questions oh yeah those i know what, like I've, I've read some of them oh no i haven't i tend <laughs> not to read them anymore <laughs> <laughs> I I did used to read them and get them pre-planned and like write them down but because I don't get loads of replies like if I got like hundreds of things then yeah I'd pick out some beforehand yeah but now it's just fun to read through uh, so we'll t we'll start by the ones with uh, in reply to your quote retweet uh, which says okay. please 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 ask me questions you know a bit needy but I didn't okay. realize people replied to that tweet uh, so the first one comes from Skeppy but it's S Q E P Y how can we get better at parkour ah uh, I think the best way to get better at parkour core is just repetition like just keep doing it like if you get to something that looks like hard and you're feeling like it's luck based there unless it's a certain thing it's probably not luck based and you can find a way to do it more consistently like most of the ways to do stuff that seem kind of p50 are explained on like parkour tutorials by now but if they're not i will i will get to you <laughs> uh, the next one then comes from uh, satire just gonna ask it how do i do a pessy <laughs> what is up satire so you want to do a pessy that's crazy you shift to the back of the block as long as an edge has to be one block deep this is also just a roof pessy i can't believe I, i've learned the semantics recently about a non-roof pessy and i don't yap about that you you press the space bar uh you nope you hold the space bar when you land on the ground you want to hold sprint and forward and then the game will let you jump again and you'll go so freaking far and then you'll make most jumps don't try to do it on a five block i went in well Oh, I'm so sorry, Jokana. I know you get the shorts. I didn't realize that you were also asked what is a pessy. Uh, so if you feel like if you feel like editing now to make it sound like it came from you, feel free to do so. If you use that as a clip, <laughs> <laughs> Jokana does the shorts. I don't want to get. I don't want to step uh. on toes. <laughs> uh, the next one comes from Mister Cat, which is a really good one. If you had to give up Vanguard or Zero Dot Miner for the rest of your life, which would you choose? I'd be Zero Dot Miner. Uh, Vanguard has been like something I've been invested. On for a fucking like what 10 years um yeah it's not gonna stop i i love the card game uh, i i i love parkour
parkour, but I but I, I value the IRL hobby a tiny bit more. What's your favorite drink? Drink. Oh my god. I think this is such a boring answer, but it's Oasis. Oasis, okay. And what's your favorite food? Favorite food. It's crisps. I'm addicted to crisps. It's it's a, it's it's an unhealthy habit. Save me. Would you rather give up Vanguard or Oasis and crisps? <laughs> Fuck. I mean, I'd get rid of Oasis and Crisps, I guess, because there'd be other options. Like, Oasis would go, but Ribena's still there. I gotta I got um, think of one that would make you give up Vanguard. <laughs> It'd be really hard. Would you rather okay. be trapped Okay, actually, hmm. Yeah, would you rather be trapped on an island in your own for a year, and you're given, like, one million pounds, uh, but I don't know why I started with would you rather, this is like, would you, <laughs> but you have to give up Vanguard. <laughs> mm, no, ah, uh, no, my well-being is worth more than a million dollars, so I would choose oh to fucking God. keep playing the game. There's gotta be something, there's gotta be something. Uh, <laughs> if you just gave me a million dollars, I'd debate it. Nah, <laughs> that's different, nah, because that's easy, that's an easy pick. <laughs> Um, I just switched card game. I just play a different one. Okay, you know I'm just switching up the entire question just to see. No, okay, but well, you have to give up card games in general then to make that harder. Ah, yeah. apart from Uno, you can play Uno. <laughs> oh, thank fuck. Uh, okay, I, you know I'm asking one just really weird question because it, it feels like it's good on topic. So you're sent to an island, right? And there's a house yep. there, and you're provided with free food for a year and stuff like that. But you can only take one item with you. What item are you taking? Or like, what thing are you taking? <laughs> can I just pick up my desk? Like, is that's one item i just gotta hold everything it's on the desk with, with, okay with that knowledge you could have picked something else and i'm really sad that that's what you thought of if you were you had the brains <laughs> you had the right idea and you just said the wrong thing <laughs> you'd just say a boat ah my bad you had the right idea you just wrong execution no, but i would have look i've got my pc it'll be fine <laughs> True. Uh, the next one then comes from Abby, who, uh, I mean, it's a bit weird that they're shooting shots considering they can't even get one, but... Was... <laughs> why did you sell the sub-5 run? Oh, so, for context, I wanted to get a sub-5 hour run right before Rotterdam, and I got a 5 hour and 18 second run, which is still traumatizing. And Jeez. the reason that went that like went badly is because on the last map it's a sky map so if you fall you have to restart the map and i fell um pretty far in because of something called a shift glitch which is so minecraft like i don't know what update it was but at some point uh when you shift on the edge of the block uh depending on your ping if you unshift the game it's still putting your last direction if you do it too fast so sometimes when you shift to the edge and unshift you'll just fly off even though you're not oh. holding anything um, and that happened. It was really sad. Uh, and then I like tried to bulldoze my way back up and I got like stuck in an area for a minute or two because I was just like stressed and nervous. And then obviously I, I do, I get a really good last two bits and then there's a 40 second cutscene, and I'm there like with 25 seconds left, just not pressing tab and praying. And it's just heartbreaking to look back on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring okay. it back up. We, we got a 423, so that's fine. Oh, nice. Next one is from Ako Akamura. What is up, Kalen? So, yes. my question for you is very simple. What if there is a jump, but there isn't a thing you can do? <gasps> no! Well, then I'd not do it, I guess. <laughs> it's Unfortunately, if there's a jump that I can't do, then it's probably not important. <laughs> Honestly, yep, nice. And this one is from Vegetable. Is false momentuming every Neo better than learning how to actually do a Neo? Well, learning to do a Neo is stupid because half of them are, um, because there's this thing in Minecraft called a head hitter timing. And head hitter timing, sure, you can do it, but there's, uh, to get into pedantics, there is a luck element to it where you could do the right timing and still fail the jump. So I think it's better to learn the gimmicky way to do it because at least with the gimmicky way of doing the jump, if you do it, it's your, you did it. And if you fail it, it's, it's a human error rather than it being, oh, well, it could be your fault. But it also could not be your fault. But and then I don't like having that like randomness to it. It's why like for pure pain marathon runs, I strive on trying to do the consistent thing for everything. And it's why when I get to say like a double neo, I'll try to not do the normal way to do it, which is like where everyone just shifts up to the front and just like tries to tap jump it because I don't trust myself to do the timing and I also don't trust Minecraft to be, to be believable. But I'll do really gimmicky stuff because it's way safer to me. And if you like learn the gimmicky way to do it, because it doesn't take that long to really like mentally understand how the gimmicky stuff works. It's like a five minutes of your time to maybe save like a, you know, like a fuckload of time later. Okay. Yeah. I uh, I can just about do a Neo one block jump. I, I did it Let's on, go. I think it's parkour course like 
six or five. I think it's five on like this yeah. month's Sparkle Warrior. I don't know where I'm on the leaderboard right now. I was like top five, I think, last time I checked. And I spent like an hour and 20 minutes trying to do one singular Neo. Um, consistency was there up until the end. But I'm going to try and get as fast <laughs> as I am. Who knows? Maybe I can. You got this. The next one comes from Akili. Are there, uh, and, and we're going to we're gonna exclude uh, MCC. You know, I, I guess you can technically include it if you want to talk about it. Yeah, talk, talk about it as well. Are there any parkour maps that you're confident you could do with your eyes closed? Oh, aka blindfolded. Uh, it depends what like the definite like how you describe it. Cause um, blindfolded blind. There's two types of blindfolded stuff. Cause obviously. I realize we haven't even talked about this in general. Like, I do. I do blindfolded yeah, parkour I realize, sometimes. Yeah, I realize that. I realize that sort of question. The so obviously I do the island parkour blindfolded, but there's two types. There's guided blindfolded, which you get someone to like tell you the type of jump and how to like and like set you up for it, and then you still have to do the inputs and stuff, which is still scary and and everything. And then there's pure blindfolded. So I've only ever done one thing pure blindfolded so far, and that's like a random course four from ages ago, and it was like um the standard completion, which I think I did in st- doing it a bunch of times. I could do it in seven minutes, which was insane to look back on. The uh, if I think about it now, like we, I, I've been talking to Kami about this, which is my guide for blindfolded stuff. Um, what uh, parkour, what uh, zero minor parkour stuff are possible, and there a lot of stuff are possible. It's less about if I can do it, and it's more about the time dedication to do it. But if I was to talk about like pure blindfolded stuff, I don't think I could do anything on the top of my like click of my fingers because you need so much practice to be ready to do any of it. Because the reason it works on island is because every time you do a stage, you can do a mental reset by just jumping off the map because it defaults looking you in a straight line. If you go on many other servers, you don't have that freedom. So it's yeah. weird. When are you doing a pure pain marathon blindfolded? <laughs> we've already, t- sadly, we've, we've thought about the logistics of it. There's a map that has a time section that is just not possible blindfolded unless you are. Oh, like, a yeah, because I, mean, I think I made the joke on your stream already, didn't I? <laughs> like, there's that. a lot of, I could, I, 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 we, I vaguely looked at this. I could do maybe five of them blindfolded. And even then, that's still a stretch and it's still hard as fuck. Um, but some of them are just no goes because, again, like, Thrice has a bit where you have to do segments in 30 seconds but there's too many jumps to do blindfolded unless i just either am the luckiest man alive or just develop or just look through the blindfold it's that easy the next one comes from Seneca. uh they asked a few questions but i'm just gonna ask one because we have a few more questions to ask mm. uh, what led you to decide to really start streaming consistently last year oh god i don't even know i just got <laughs> i think i just got bored and then obviously the, sh- the shorts are doing well and then uh like well in my eyes and i thought man okay i want to do more parkour stuff and i realized like oh i could stream myself doing like the one life challenges on a zero minor because it's a bunch of like there's a challenge bit um and those were fun to do and then like i spread out and then obviously oh i don't know why i keep saying obviously one day carter dm'd going i'm gonna beat all the black maps in 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 one sitting and i was like carter could i do this and he goes yeah sure so i do it carter watches me do it and then goes uh I'm a, I'm a wait to do this. I think Carter's done it now, but I think he did it in three sittings, which is unfortunate because I want him to do it in one sitting because I'm a, I'm a Carter believer. But I just like doing really stupid stuff and then being able to stream more consistently meant I could keep doing more stupid stuff. So it's an incentive. I didn't realize how many questions we had. I didn't, I didn't, I we actually have loads. <laughs> so we're going to ask like two or three more. This yeah, one's no, from Uncertain Pine. Uh, what is the most random fact you know? God in luck. Lo- <laughs> I gotta think. Uh, I'm so brain off. I, I, there, there has to be something random, I know. There's so many cool Why questions. I... I just want to be sitting here all night asking all these questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm trying to think of like a random stupid fact. You know what? I got a cool random fact that you can share with us. How do you inventory jam? That's a cool <laughs> random fact. That's a that's a random fact. Inventory jamming? Um, <laughs> yo, you want to you inventory jam? No way. <laughs> uh, inv- so, well, the random... That's not even a random... Fuck. <laughs> Just, I've saved you, just go with it. Okay, inventory jamming is where you open your inventory and then any keys you hold when you close your inventory will be put on input zero. So they'll happen immediately. So what you'll do a lot of the time is, uh, it's mostly what a lot of parkour people hate at the moment uh, is something called inventory force momentum where you'll open your inventory at the back of the block, hold forward space and sprint and then close your inventory. Bro. No, you're not sprint. It's forward, forward space. You close your inventory and then press sprint. So you will always get the forward and space part of the force and you won't fuck that bit up it's a lifesaver in terms of consistency but it's like obviously it's slower but i've got i've done it so much that it's not even slower to me anymore because i'm i'm very good at pressing r on my keyboard twice because r is my open inventory wait i think that's the same for me i think r is my open inventory as well e is my f5 oh no e is my open inventory i use q to crouch <laughs> 
Oh, okay. I don't think I could physically ever inventory gem. I use my mouse things. to crouch. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, no, that's actually not, no, that's actually not a bad idea. For once, I'm actually, I'm actually relating to a weird keybind because that's actually not a horrible <laughs> idea. Because I use one hand to sprint and one hand to, to crouch. It's like full, full body control. That's cool though. I like that. There are so many cool questions, uh, but I try not to keep the Twitter segment too long because then it's just like rapid fire questions and I feel like it takes yeah. away from like the rawness of the podcast. So we got one more uh, from Sanbat. I've already, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. It feels like, <laughs> it feels like a name I pronounced wrong. Top five event Minecraft players right now, according to you. Me, 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 me. Okay, good job, guys. We did it. Um, nice. Okay, I, well, I think, that being I think... said. <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> For an actual five, though, I think it would be... So what we've, like, the mild conclusion we came up with with looking at uh, stats a while back in, in, a, in a friend group VC was we tend to group four of me, Toph, Kel, and uh, Fine together, even though, like, Fine's falling off a little bit, but he's still really cool. And then we we struggle. I we never we never think of a fifth. It's so hard to think of a fifth. And I feel bad because there are people that are good at. I'm just gonna say nah. Fuck it. Stand on 05. Give him give him the clown he needs. I don't even said me. <laughs> Sorry. I actually don't like. I've realized it's it's really funny. Sorry, we're we're talking about me for a second again. My bad. <laughs> um. I, it's, it's kind of weird because so many people have like come to me and be like oh yeah you're an event player and i'm like no no i'm not like yeah you are and I'm like <laughs> i'd love to be an event player but realistically speaking i'm not an event player i manage mayhem and i don't play in it because i manage it that's just my yeah. way of seeing it i just don't want to play because I'm, I'm player managing and i cast it i'm more of an event caster now i mean you know i want to play mania but the next mania is on the same day as something that i'm going to be doing i believe so i haven't been able to sign up to it which i should probably actually confirm ah. off this podcast to make sure i'm in the other thing so then thing so how play mania not in pb uh not in block wars obviously not in block wars origins not in yeah. any of these other ones but i am trying to cast more uh so i'm, I'm happy to be known as like an event caster slash the guy who talks about events or like just yeah. does podcasts and stuff so but yeah sorry just a weird interesting segment of like so many people like you're an event plan i'm like i'm not i'm re i'm realistically speaking i'm not i'm just in the event scene which is so strange it's so now no, i'm thinking about it this is really strange huh well with that being said galen <laughs> that brings Hi. the uh, that brings the end of this week's inside mc yippee sorry that i went on little tangents talking about myself there my bad no you're fine it's just been so long since i recorded a podcast uh like two days but still <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh before i do the outro here i always like to give this opportunity for you to promote yourself for anyone who's got this far into the podcast they clearly love your voice or clearly love what you're saying uh, so where yeah. can people find you on all social media hey guys you can find <laughs> twitch's latest partner on uh twitch with kaylin underscore f or you can find me on youtube if you search kaylin um i like i like the name kaylin it's very easy to say and very easy to type although no one spells it right but i believe in you lock in there you go and thank you so much for for coming on uh, yeah, it's been amazing me. talking to you and it's been yeah it's been nice here and learning more about you might have to start watching some vanguard with that being said this has been this week's inside mc thank you all for listening stay safe don't eat too much bread pieces mm -hmm.